Yet another mass shooting has found its way into the headlines, and people wonder how these shooters can be detected before they commit their crimes. Or even if they can. San Diego State University business ethics lecturer Dr. Wendy Patrick joins us on the Kogo News Live line. Wendy, good morning. And can you tell when someone is close to the edge? Yeah, LaDonna, that's what you look for. You, it's a pathway to violence. In other words, nobody just snaps. I know people use that terminology all the time. But there are red flags. What makes this guy stand out thus far, 24 hours out, is we don't have them yet. So far, he's the proverbial axe murderer next door because that's what we hear from friends and neighbors. He was nice. He kept to himself, 64-year-old man living in a retirement community. There wasn't any of the radicalization, the dangerous digital footprint, the YouTube footage where he leaks exactly what he's planning to do. Now, I'm not saying I don't think we're going to find that stuff. In fact, I hope we do because he's the devil we don't know right about now because we don't have those facts and circumstances. But those are the kinds of things that we hope friends and loved ones can help sort of put the pieces together as to who this guy was and why did he do what he did? That's the only thing missing. We know the where, we know the when, we don't know the why. Now, someone sold him these weapons and someone sold him all this ammunition. So should retailers be obligated to contact authorities? Well, he bought them legally. And you know the, that he had some interviews already that have been publicized regarding the folks that sold him these weapons. And they were, I don't want to say defensive, but they explained that there was no reason they shouldn't sell them to him. He background checks fine. He had no criminal history. I got to tell you, one of the things this is spurred, not, you know, in addition to the gun debate, we're always going to have that. But people are now asking, should there be a limit on quantity, quality, or frequency within which somebody is allowed to buy weapons without triggering some kind of a reporting requirement. Now, there's no easy answer to this, just a very vigilant debate. But the fact that he had so many weapons and all and paired with the explosive material in his car, you know, I got to say, given how many weapons he had, maybe it's not a surprise the brother didn't know about it. But I can't wait to see what the girlfriend has to say when she's interviewed when she returns to the U.S. Somebody that lived with this man must have known something. You know, at some point, and, and that's, you know, that's the thing. You will look in hindsight and say, oh, wow, was that a signal I should have been I should have been more cognizant of. And, and hopefully that means that from here on out, we are more cognizant of those signals. Wendy, well, always what distinguishes, what distinguishes this guy is we don't have the signals yet. I mean, it's, it's frustrating that we don't have the red flags even now, 24 hours out, that we usually do. Right. Uh, Dr. Wendy Patrick, thank you so much for joining us on the Kogo News Live line. Thanks, Wendy.